One night, in Istanbul, Turkey, when rich people are busy partying, there is someone who works scavenging garbage on the outskirts of the city. The man's name is Mehmet. That night, while he was picking up trash, there is a house caught his attention. Every night he always looked at the house. Soon it rained and Mehmet left immediately. Arriving at a warehouse, Mehmet's younger brother, Gonzalez, came. Seeing his brother go scavenging along Gonzalez was angry. He says that picking up trash is not Mehmet's job, as he is the boss of this place. In addition, even though he is not his biological brother, Gonzalez or who is familiarly called Gonzi is very worried about his brother's health. Mehmet suffers from kidney failure due to overexertion. At that time his health is getting worsened and he had to be rushed to the hospital. When they arrived at the hospital, Mehmet's condition was severe. The staffs did not immediately help him. They asked to take a queue number and wait for their turn. However, the service of the hospital staff is different when suddenly a woman with a glamorous appearance arrives she came with her son. The hospital staff immediately helped the child. At that moment, Mehmet felt familiar with the woman. Then, Mehmet was called. After he was checked, the doctor said that until now there is still no supply of kidney donors for him. During this time, Mehmet often came to the hospital and the answer was always the same. Mehmet was asked to patiently wait until a kidney donor was available. After kidney dialysis, their uncle Tosin came to pick them up. Uncle Tosin are adoptive parents who have raised Mehmet and Gonzi. On the way home, Uncle Tosin asked about the cost of the operation if one day a kidney donor for him had arrived. Mehmet replies that he has money and savings. Currently, the amount is not sufficient but he just needed to save a little more to cover the cost of the operation. Along the way home the three of them joked with each other, laughed and sang together in the middle of the heavy rain. <laughs> Mehmet's house is located in an alley called the Alley of Misery. It was the environment he grew up in the environment is full of prostitutes, drug addicts and street kids who like to inhale glue. Before going to sleep, Mehmet always looks at his childhood memories with his mother he wanted to cure his longing. The next morning, Mehmet is feeling better. After bathing and having breakfast, he went to the garbage warehouse. Along the way, he looks so cheerful, he greets everyone he meets. In fact, he gave money to children who wanted to buy glue. His appearance was completely different from the previous days. When he arrived at the warehouse, the other scavengers were already waiting for him. Mehmed is the boss of the collector. He provides jobs for street children who do not have parents and a place to live. While Mehmed and Gonzi were chatting, Mehmed suddenly remembered their dreams it's written on Gonzi's birthday. They note several lists of their dreams such as boarding a plane, staying in a luxury hotel and so on. However, there is one dream that has yet to come true which is to find their birth mother. Mehmet promises that one day he will surely find his mother. Unlike Mehmet, Gonzi prefers to enjoy his life without thinking about his past. Then, they start their work as scavengers. When they finish work, they each get paid. However, Gonzi arrives last, but when Mehmet tells him to weigh the box he got, Gonzi wanted to go. Somewhere, there is an event. Gonzi intended to beg at the gate of the event, so that today he can earn more money. Mehmet was left alone. After calculating the day's income, he wanted to save it and put it under the sofa, but suddenly he heard a strange sound. Turns out, there was a child there. The boy looked scared. Mehmet tries to approach him slowly and asks his name and his house, but the boy still said nothing until finally Mehmet offered him a meal. The boy immediately sat down it was as if he hadn't eaten in days, but because he still didn't want to talk, Mehmet threatened to tell the police. Only then he says that his name is Ali. He tells that his mother had thrown him into the trash bag. Mehmet saw the many bruises on Ali's body it was as if he had been beaten. When Mehmet asks who did all this, Ali replies that he was beaten by his stepfather. Mehmet takes Ali to his house. After Ali fell asleep, Mehmet called Gonzi. He tells about the child from inside the trash bag. Seeing Ali, Gonzi was very surprised. He didn't know why there was a boy in his sack. Gonzi suggested that they report it to the police but Mehmet refuses. He decided to take care of Ali. He also asked Gonzi not to tell Uncle Tossin about this. Finally Gonzi promises not to tell anyone. The next day, Mehmet looked for clothes and other necessities for Ali. While waiting at the clothing store, Mehmet meets the mother and her son he saw at the hospital the other day. However, he noticed that there were bruises on her son's face. Mehmet asks the child's condition. Hearing this question the woman was suddenly frightened and immediately left. One day, they all bathed together in a typical Turkish public bath. 
While bathing Ali, Mehmet felt sad for the bruises all over Ali's body. On the other hand, Gonzi is seen enjoying the bath with the other children. At that moment, one of the children asked about the meaning of the tattoo on Gonzi's waist. He told that the tattoo is a picture of his parents. Although since birth he never knew what they looked like, but he dreamed that one day he could meet them. Then, Gonzi and all the kids had fun and sang along. After bathing, Mehmet, Ali and Gonzi had lunch at a burger joint. Since Ali doesn't know his date of birth, Mehmet plans to throw a birthday party for Ali tonight. Then, he took Ali to the cake shop. There, Mehmet asks what kind of cake Ali likes, and Ali said that he likes chocolate cake. When he met the shopkeeper, Mehmet seemed familiar with him. Mehmet often buys cakes there to celebrate the birthday parties of other street children who have no parents and don't know when their birthday is. In the kitchen, Mehmet asked the shopkeeper for used cakes that had not expired. This is so that Mehmet can buy cakes at a lower price. But just as Mehmet was picking the cake, he suddenly heard Ali scream. Turns out someone wanted to kidnap Ali. Mehmet is angry at Gonzi for leaving Ali alone. At night, Ali's birthday party began. All the children have fun and dance together. Gonzi looked gloomy because of what happened this afternoon. He began to think about his brother who loved Ali too much. Then, it was time to blow out the candles. After the candle is lit, Mehmet tells Ali to pray first. But Ali failed to blow the candles and made everyone laugh. Mehmet invites Ali to blow it together. After that, Mehmet and Ali sat alone looking at the city. At that moment, Ali said his prayer before blowing out the candle. His prayer is that he is eager to have a lot of money and save it. Then, take his mother away from his evil stepfather. The next day, Mehmet takes Ali to the beach. He taught Ali to swim. At night, after putting Ali to bed, Mehmet went to the barn to make a cart, so Ali could join him in scavenging and collecting his own money. But suddenly Uncle Tossin came, they sat down and talked while drinking tea together. Uncle Tossin came to discuss about Ali. Mehmet is disappointed in Gonzi who has told Uncle Tossin. Mehmet simply replies that he will take care of Ali until the boy is ready to meet his mother. Mehmet was sure that Ali's mother would be happy to see Ali again. For Mehmet, all parents must love their children. Hearing that, Uncle Tossin tried to tell Mehmet, if all parents love their children, then where are Mehmet's parents? Where are Gonzi's parents? And where are the other street children's parents? Uncle Tossin tries to wake Mehmet up, so he can accept reality. The fact that not all parents are good, hearing this advice Mehmet was silent. The next morning in front of the house, Mehmet calls out to Ali. But don't know why the street kids there laughed at him. When Ali came out, he saw that there were already two garbage carts. All night Mehmet made the cart so Ali could make money with him and Ali could gather the money himself to save his mother. Before starting to work, Mehmet invites Ali to raise a cart. <laughs> After work before putting Ali to bed, as usual Mehmet always looked at his photo with his mother. He also found his favorite toy car when he was a child and he gave the toy to Ali, of course Ali was happy to have a new toy. After Ali sleeps, Mehmet goes to the warehouse. He saw street children who were drunk from sucking glue. Mehmet tells them to stay away from that bad thing and he asks them not to influence Ali for doing the bad thing. In the warehouse, suddenly Mehmet's kidney disease recurred. Fortunately, he still had a stockpile of medicine. Feeling sick, Mehmet decides to go home, but on the way home, he saw street children gathered in front of his house. Turns out, while Mehmet was away they had gotten Ali drunk on glue. Luckily, that night Ali's condition was not too bad. He inhaled glue because he was instigated by the street children. They said, if Ali was drunk he would be able to meet his mother. Because of a very deep sense of longing, Ali was instigated. Mehmet takes Ali home. At first, Ali refused because he was still afraid of his stepfather. But after Mehmet assures him that he will help save his mother, Ali finally does. After they walked long enough to find an address, Ali suddenly fell silent looking at an apartment. Not long after a well-dressed man came out of the building, Ali is scared and hides behind Mehmet. It turned out that the man was Ali's stepfather who had always beaten him. Mehmet told Ali to wait while he would chase the man. But unfortunately he lost track. When he returned, Mehmet is surprised to see Ali crying in fear in the trash bag. His face was also covered with bruises like he had been beaten by someone. Mehmet thought that the scavengers in the area had beaten Ali because Ali had been scavenging in their area. Mehmet is feeling angry. He got into fights with scavengers in the area.
As a result of the incident Mehmet was rushed to the hospital. The nurse says that Mehmet almost died if the police were late to save him. As he lay down, all that Mehmet had in mind was Ali, he kept asking the nurse about Ali. But the nurse explained that there was no child named Ali. Mehmet must be feeling dizzy because half the blood in his body is now in the dialysis machine. Even when Mehmet asks Gonzi about Ali's condition, Gonzi only replies that Ali is nowhere to be found. Hearing that, Mehmet panicked. He tried to escape from the hospital. Gonzi then carries Mehmet to the warehouse in very bad condition. Arriving at the warehouse Mehmet shifted the sofa, then took all his savings for his surgery costs. Uncle Tosin comes and he tries to stop Mehmet, but Mehmet persisted in wanting to use all his savings to help Ali. Even Mehmet threatened them with a knife to let them go. Finally, they let Mehmet go by driving Uncle Tosin's car. While enduring the pain, Mehmet walked slowly towards the apartment's door where Ali lived. At the door, there was a grandmother. The grandmother did not look surprised as if she was used to seeing Mehmet come to their house. But the grandfather was annoyed. He immediately kicked Mehmet out and said that Ali didn't live there anymore. Mehmet forced his way in, pointing a knife. He looks for Ali in every room but doesn't find him anywhere. Until finally, Mehmet entered a room that looked different from the others. A room that opens up old memories and wounds of his childhood. Then, from behind, the grandfather and grandmother called out Mehmet's full name. That is, Mehmet Ali. They had just moved there but they knew the place they were living in was once the home of Mehmet Ali's family. In this house, little Mehmet Ali was tortured by his stepfather. Unable to bear to see her son suffering, the mother takes Mehmet away. Then, she put him in a garbage sack. Since then, from childhood until now, he has always lived alone. Despite being a good older brother to all of his adopted siblings, Mehmet Ali's longing for his mother is still felt.